gang. Hola de la Ciudad de México. Si, sí, we're here in the park of Chapultepec. It's the second largest park in Latin America, and it's bigger than Central Park in New York. There's um, a lot of things to see in this park. We're going to check out the castle and the Anthropology Museum. But there's also a zoo, there's lakes, there's all kinds of monuments. Lots to do here. So, come along with us. Hi, I'm Avi. And I'm V. Join us in our explorations of the central coast of California. And our adventures beyond. While we were in Mexico City, one thing that we definitely wanted to do was to experience riding Mexico City's subway system. So on the morning that we were heading to Chapultepec Park, we decided to take a short walk from our hotel to the subway station and navigate the public transportation system. So all of these subway lines are color-coded, so we can even see from here how across the street there's a big pink sign because we're going to go on the pink line. Pink sign for the pink line. And I can see a numero uno, and that's going to be our stop up ahead. Part of Total Recall, the movie, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, was filmed in this Mexican subway. And I'm hoping maybe we'll see, possibly, a place where it was filmed. Yeah, there were a couple different reasons why we wanted to check it out. One of which being that it's a very inclusive subway system in that it allows people who are illiterate to navigate the system through the use of symbology and colors. We've deciphered that our animal is the grasshopper. So here we go. Dos para uh, Chapultepec. Cuanto cuesta? Diez pesos. So in this system, each line is identified by a different color, and every stop is identified with a different icon as well as its name. So by combining the two, you can figure out where you're going and how to get there. Disculpe, señor. Queríamos ir a Chapultepec. Este lado. Gracias. this side. Let's just go. Hold on. Hold on, what? Hold on to something. Oh. <laughs> Somebody hasn't ridden a train in a while. No announcing the stops at all. Just no, so yeah, know. right? Pay you're, attention. you're on your own. You gotta look out for it. No announcements of any kind. No. There's just these... Now, if it's this busy and it's not rush hour, I imagine during rush hour it is slammed. Let's go, let's go. Later this afternoon, on our way back, we find out exactly what rush hour looks like. Stick around to the end of this video to see for yourself. Castillo de Chapultepec. Well, you blew it, Avi. You blamed Quaid! You blamed about Mars! Are you crazy? But I don't even know anything about Mars. <laughs> Not sure what this structure is. Oh, it's interesting, it's definitely art. Honey, I shrunk the gringos. <laughs> you just can't help it, you're so cute. <laughs> I'm going to be chasing a gigantic little piece of Oreo cookie. Gigantic and simultaneously minute. It's very peaceful here. Even though it's ringed with traffic, it's still, you can hear birds and it's, yeah, nice and quiet. I can take a nap here, go for a run here. I see people riding bikes. And we're just on the very end of it. I mean, this thing's huge. Yeah. So I'm sure farther in, you probably don't hear the traffic at all. Right. This park is almost 17,000 acres. And what else could you do in a park? You could have a picnic. The picnic benches. This would be a cool place to have a, have a picnic. Yeah. It's a very um, easy slope. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to loop around a couple times to get there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's ever increasingly upward. All right, well, we are here in front of the castle. Yeah, you get your tickets down at the bottom at a little ticket booth that looks like a mini castle. Hola. 
Uh, ¿Puedo usar mi tarjeta? Solo efectivo. ¿Solo efectivo? ¿Qué está esto? Eh, no hay red. Ok. 170 de dos. 72 para dos personas? 170. O oh, 170, ok. Gracias. Gracias a usted. Okay, buen día. And then you walk up the hill. It's a mellow slope, but it's long. It's a long walk. And here at the top is the castle. It's got all kinds of museums where you can learn all about the history of Mexico. The struggle for independence and the different obstacles they had to overcome. So come on and check it out with us. Let's go. Construction on this castle started in 1785 and it was originally intended to be a summer home for a Spanish viceroy. This is pretty. After Mexico gained its independence from Spain, it became the presidential mansion up until 1939 when it was turned into a museum by President Lázaro Cadenas. So we were in Lázaro Cardenas Plaza in Puerto Vallarta. Apparently, Lázaro Cardenas was a general that actually became president of Mexico for a year. So, what do you think? It's pretty cool. A lot of history, a lot of cool exhibits. Definitely a beautiful castle. Yeah, I loved its geometrical structure and just the, the organization and how you could see through and did the different levels and layers of it. So I like how it's designed around all these little interior courtyards. It's kind of a cool castle design. Yeah. Definitely would say you should stop by here. I've read that you can spend all day exploring it, and that seems to be true. We only explored a part of it. We were here for about an hour, and we went through like one wing. Yeah, about half of it maybe yeah, so in total. It's big. It's worth a couple bucks to get in and check it out. They won't let you bring your selfie stick though, or water. So yeah, they won't let you bring in water. Which and, I guess makes sense. But, but. And it's warm, so yeah. <laughs> fill up before you come in. <laughs> But it is cool. I mean, this is the only castle in the Americas that actually yeah. housed royalty. Historic just for that. Yeah. And if you like what you're seeing, please click a like and hit subscribe. And ding a ling a ling, ring that bell to get notified when we're on our next adventure. Statistically, many people who are watching this aren't subscribed. So do us a favor. If you like what you're seeing, help out our channel. It just takes a second. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next stop of the day is to the Museo de Antropología, the Museum of Anthropology. All right, let's go. Let's go. The museum is the largest and most visited in the country. Its galleries display artifacts from all the major pre-Columbian cultures of Mexico. You can pay with cash at the window to the right, or you can use your car at the machines to the left. You can pay with efectivos, but right here is a or two machines that you can use your card to pay with, and that's what we're gonna do. This is the fountain they say online, don't get wet in this fountain. They don't want you to play in it. Right. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's really beautiful. The main courtyard is ringed with many galleries, each highlighting a different culture from Mexico's history. Uh, Toltec, Oaxaca, and I'm not sure what that sign says. Well, I'm curious about the Toltecs. Let's go over the Toltecs. Yeah. And Tenochtitlan. That's what the Aztecs called Mexico City, I believe. Uh huh. Or the place that was. Is Mexico currently City. Mexico City? Well, for me, visiting this museum was definitely one of the highlights of Mexico City. For sure. It's huge. The collection is extensive. It's way deeper and richer than I thought it was going to be. There's so much here, you really could spend all day, once again, just exploring this place. Yeah, we were here for about two hours, and we maybe saw three galleries. Definitely didn't get to explore at all, but for us, some of the highlights were seeing the statue of the Aztec water deity. The recreation of the feather serpent pyramid. and the disc of the god of the underworld, and certainly the sunstone. Apparently being a Toltec was obelisky business. So we're going to be climbing this very pyramid very soon. It's gonna be a lot taller though. <laughs> We're
poor guy. This guy had this one removed. I'm pretty sure this museum has the largest collection of pre-Columbian artifacts anywhere in the world. Yeah, between the park and the museum, though, we had literally been walking all day, so it was about time that we decided to find some food. And luckily, the museum has a restaurant on site. So what's in your salad? Uh, let's see. Spinach, pineapple, real pineapple, grapefruit, goat cheese, um, soy dressing. It's really good. It's very fancy. Yeah. Presentation is... Um, decadent would be the yeah, term I would use. Decadent. Yeah. Mine too, especially this like puree of sweet potato. This is my little portion of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's rolled, so it's, it's rolled. Rest. Yeah, no, it's 200 grams. This boy needs a little bit more, so I'm just gonna get some more tacos. Uh, we'll probably <laughs> eat tacos in a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, this is a cool little restaurant that they've got here. It was nice. The the closest places that were com comparable were like a half mile away, and they even serve uh, alcoholic beverages here. So it was the choice that suited our needs the most. Salud. Salud. After that, we decided to catch the subway back to our hotel. To the left. Isabella Catolica. So it's only two stops away. So here we were for the market, and we, we need to get to here. Okay. All right, and look at that craziness, yo. Next one. Next one. <laughs> wow. This is a while we're not going far. Right. <laughs> we're here at rush hour and it's a lot busier than it was when we got here. Let's hit F you. Go. Alright, find something to grab onto V if you can. <laughs> okay, that that would be me. I think we're kinda of too packed in before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now I know what a sardine in a can feels like. They're probably not this hot. Yeah, it's this is very <laughs> warm. Too. Oh! All right. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> okay, over here. Yeah, there was nothing to hold on to. So when the train stopped, everybody just kind of lurched into each other. It feels good to be out of the throng of bodies. There's a lot of body heat. Yeah. Oh, oh. And it's tough to look out for the streets of Mexico. Although these streets are better maintained than Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, they're more narrow, more hilly. And more broken up. More broken up. Taqueria, eh? Why don't we go there? Tacos al pastor. What are you in the mood for to eat? Why don't we go back to the hotel first and at least drop off all this weight? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, card. So we just picked a, an appetizing looking taco shop, uh, restaurant actually, called El Ca. And just down the street from our hotel. Just down the street from our hotel. One of the criterion was if they had tacos de pastor and if they actually had a soup. Yeah. It's totally authentic and tastes way better if it's on a on a spit with a pineapple stuck on top. So I got a few tacos de pastor. So did she. And I got one more taco of rotisserie chicken. It looks really good. And it looks really good. So I'm gonna dig in more and more. I I've, I've just been like I love really spicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do these days. This is our sixth time in Mexico, so it's kind of grown on me, but. My tolerance has gone up. It and sure has. Over your shoulder. Oh. Those look super yummy. Yeah. Three small tacos is like the perfect size for me to watch. All right. Well, provecho. Provecho. Yep. You want some salsa before you dig in? Sure. Pica. Oh, that's really good. Nice. Really, really good. Cool. Whole chunk of chicken. <laughs> it really is, yeah. It's a big one. It's like a thigh piece or something. Was 
almost been eating the bone, but that was really good. Yeah. Looks yummy. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us on this day in Mexico City. We certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for our next one when we explore the historic center, go inside the cathedral. We explore the Templo Mayor. And eat our last meal of street tacos on this trip in Mexico. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Bye.